SME Market Hub. Buy, sell, list, connect. went to church this side we don't know yet oh we don't know <laughs> good well i am so 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 excited to be in lagos nigeria you know it's a big deal this is a big deal for me all right so i just want to see which side is excited so i'm going to start with making my friends in the u.s jealous so i want to start with taking your picture but i need to see some I need to see some excitement. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is it, right? Nice. There you go. Thank you very much. All right, now we can start. I find now we can start. Okay. So, anyway, my name is Marcus Samson. I was born in Ethiopia, so on the east side of Africa. And for me to have the chance to come back, Thanks to the GT Bank for everything they're doing to put bringing us all together. All of you guys can be anywhere else in the world, but because of your effort and the young entrepreneurs out there that really, this is a massive, massive thing to put together. So think about that, right? The fact that all of these vendors out there started with a dream. So I think it's very important when this class, what we're thinking about is Whatever you guys are dreaming, hold on to it, make it bigger, because you can make it really, really big. You're looking at an example. I was born, like I said, in Ethiopia. We're all in Africa, so when you're outside Lagos or you're outside Addis, it looks obviously very different than in here, right? So I was born in that little dirt clay hut uh, and was adopted to Sweden. So I went from the warmest country to the coldest country, right? But the one thing that always unified me for always was always food. Our love, our family loves for food. And think about it, I don't know how many, exactly how many tribes Ethiopia or Nigeria has, how many languages that both those countries has, but think about what really when you want to explain for somebody who you are, you know, there's only a couple of ways to do that. It's music, right? And it's food. And if you get the combination of music and food together, you can already show that I'm not just specifically from Africa. I'm actually from this very place. So music and food and culture, which is celebrated here today over this weekend, uh, is something that I hold on to. In my restaurant, Red Rooster in Harlem, we have tons of music and food constantly together. Who's been to Red Rooster in Harlem? All right, we need, to, we need to work on that. We need to work on that. We're soon going to open in London, so you guys can come to London as well. So how do things happen? So I just want to think about this, about dreams, especially the young ones. I saw this young kid here with his, yes, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel. All right, this festival is for you. Think about it. I'm this festival is for you <laughs> because it's about the next generation, and you represent that. This festival is for you, all right? You can thank me later, <laughs> all right? So, everybody have different backgrounds, right? I came to the US with $300, $300, Daniel, less than a iPad, right? You know what an iPad is. I know you know what an iPad is, right? So, but I held on to my dream. And my dream was constantly to think about and communicate my story through food. So in Ethiopia, we have Berber, we have injera. Very food, big food nation, but in the media always portrayed as there's not enough food, right? But I would say the biggest food outside Africa, if you think about restaurants in, West, in, in America or in England, is always Ethiopian restaurant. I think it has to do with the injera bread is so you people remember it, we eat with your hands. So it's very, very specific. So um, in Sweden though, the food I grew up with was completely different. Herring, 
a lot of herring, mackerel, but I know we got mackerel in, in Nigeria as well, right? And, uh, but we treated, and also we smoked our mackerel, right? And I had a fantastic dish uh, out there before that it was like smoked herring, lots of chilies, and you know, really, really delicious flavors, right? So this idea about showing your food, show through, showing your culture through food is something that is massive. The food that we're gonna serve today is a blend between sort of my Scandinavian upbringing, some parts of Africa, and a little bit of America. So we're gonna start with cured salmon, cured fish, which we call a secret rice, right? And pickling, preserving, how many people have had smoked herring or smoked mackerel? Okay, almost all of you guys tasted at some point, right? But the smoking technique, even Nigerian smoking technique or preserving technique, why did we do that? We do that here because it, it's a necessity and it stands, stays fresh, right? Right, it's a way of us to preserve food. But the other thing it is, and here's really the kicker, is it's also a way it's also a flavor enhancer, right? So a smoked fish that our parents started to preserve because they had to also can become a flavor enhancer. Start serving. So the idea that we're doing something because we had to, and now we actually we do it because it tastes better, as an entrepreneur, you can then think about, I'm also doing it so I can charge more money, right? You go to, uh, if you go to a French restaurant or you go to, when you go to Europe, you have smoked salmon, right? Well, smoked salmon costs always more than fresh salmon. It's no different than the smoked herring and smoked mackerel that you, you are doing here. But here's the only difference. When you smoke for flavor versus what it has to be in terms of preserving it, you have to smoke it less. The one thing, I love all the Nigerian food we had, but a lot of it is cooked long. <laughs> Right? But we had to because it was a way of obviously preserving the food. But today, with refrigeration, fresher ingredients, we actually have to dial back a little bit of the cooking, right? And one day, maybe you don't think about it, but it also then changes our palate, right? Who, who in this audience have had sushi, right? Did you ever think when you grew up, like, I'm going to eat raw fish, right? So we have changed our palate, right? So this rice, and you know what? We have a bunch, we're gonna serve a bunch, but I think that what's important is all of you guys that, when you come to my restaurant, I have to charge you. When I come to Lagos, it's for free. So you know what? Who's gonna have the first bite? Have here, okay, I have a couple of portions I'm gonna give out, right? So, the next course, we're gonna do a shrimp. Okay, so we do, we're do. we gonna do a roll. So basically, go ahead, explain what we're doing. So, we have beautiful head-on shrimp that we're just gonna cook shortly. But when you boil shrimp, you have to make sure that the water is boiling hard because you're gonna cook it short. You're gonna almost undercook it, right? So we cook it maybe just for a minute or so, and then we're gonna lift it out, right? So when you do precise, fine dining, it's, you know, comfort food is important because it sort of sets us who we are as tribes, who we are as people, who we are from, you know, it sort of sets us apart, right? But fine dining is differently. It's almost like classical music, right? that it has to be a certain notes. So when I cook in fine dining food, I think about it almost like classical, food, classical music. When I cook comfort food, I think about it in those terms, right? We need both. All right, so they're gonna come up, right? Just like that, and it turns, change, just like that. And then, after that sort of calm down, cool down a little bit, we're gonna come back to that. You can continue to do that. By the way, who had the salmon? It tasted different, right? Yeah, that's good. That's what it's about. Different experiences. So the avocado is green and smooth, and then the rice, crispy. Very crispy. Yes. 
Salty, exactly, because gravlax, cured salmon, is protected by its salt. Grav means in Swedish how to bury, and before we had refrigerations, we, the only thing we had was salt and sugar, so we buried our salmon in salt and sugar. And that's where the salt comes from. And that's also how we can stay fresh for weeks. Once you cured salmon like that, you can have it for weeks. All right. What other questions do we have? I know it's hot, right? It's hot. Good. Yes, from this side. I do still think that this side is a little bit more engaged. I have to say that, right? Who's the loudest? Are these guys loud or what? What's happening over here? Yes. Are we awake? And these guys? Are we, are we, are we awake yet? Yeah. Uh, a little bit. I think, yes. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You the other one. You, yeah, you have to start with her. With her. Yes, you have to wrap everything. You, I see you. My question is, have you ever tasted any Nigerian food? If you have, which one is your favorite? Pardon me? Apart from the suya. Yeah, yes, suya. Apart, apart from the suya, have you tasted any other Nigerian yes, food? Yes, I have. Fufu is not just in, in Nigeria. You have all over West Africa, right? I, I love, I mean, it's not really Nigerian, but one of my favorite dishes from West Africa is chepujen, which is more like Fulani and more, more like uh, Senegal and going down that right. So what, I ask you back, what should I taste before I leave? What should I have? What is a must? Amala. <laughs> well, we are at a food festival. We have a lot of people here. Can somebody go out and get me some native good Nigerian food? We have money. We have, we're with the bank. At least I know we have money. I know that. <laughs> So who can go out and get me some Nigerian food? Perfect. Thank you. I'm finding my money here. This is my Nigerian money. All right. So what should we buy? Huh? I had pounded jam. Yeah, of course. So can you go out and get me some food? OK, you pick. How much is enough? Two? Make sure you come back. <laughs> All right. Are we going to do the shrimp roll? Let's do it. Let's do the shrimp roll. So, the next generation of Nigerian chefs has a huge task of bridging what is local, what is important from here, and how to send it out to the world. Yes. Where's my man? You, you, you I'm, right, I'm right here. I'm right here. You go right here. What do you want me to do? Right the hair. All right, cool. right here. Hi. Um, it's really nice to be here. Very nice meeting <laughs> you too. My name is Minjaba. I'm a food blogger. Yes. And I'm food really blogger. Curious. I love it. I'm Blog. really sort of um, curious to know what some of your personal strategies are. Can you just hold the mic a little? I'm really curious to know what some of your personal strategies are for, you know, st like getting inspired and staying sharp and just kind of growing and improving because, you know, you're so accomplished and you've got so many things going on. How do you continue to find inspiration and to challenge yourself? Yeah, but you, said, you said a couple of things in there. First of all, how do we evolve? I think through social media, right? Instagram is a great way for people to see that's happening over here and that's happening here in Lagos. So that's a good way to stay connected. Food bloggers like yourself has a huge important role supporting the chefs and supporting the local food as well. So you sit on, so again, it takes a village, right? It takes a tribe to change things, right? How do I stay? So there are a couple of things, curiosity. I am completely passionate about my profession, but I'm very curious. So the first thing, and when I come to a place like this, I want to try the local food. And I'm thinking about, now I'm thinking about what can I do with peanuts? So what can I do with suya? What can I do? So if you're not curious as a chef, you have to quit. So that's not, for me, a strategy. When I think then takes curiosity, with work ethic, which my parents installed in me, right? And it wasn't an easy ride. I started, I got a scholarship to go to Switzerland. I got to a three-star Michelin restaurant in France. I lived in Japan. Very strange, right? But in Japan, I learned also different tastes. Coming here, coming to Africa, the continent, making the book, took me 10 years. So nothing goes fast. I know a lot of people who want quick successes. But if you look at successful people, they probably are a 20 years success. 
It probably took them 20 years to go to school, come climb up. And I know today's world, people want it faster. There is no, you know, faster path. But you know, I'm very fortunate. I travel all over the world and I do the profession that I love more than anything. And I consider myself very, very fortunate. So that's not a strategy. You're gonna meet me 10 years from now, I'm gonna be doing the same thing. And hopefully, your blog is just bigger and bigger and you can write about it, all right? All right, as I'm slicing, what questions do we have? What are, where's my guy? Where's my I'm right man? here. You taking right a break? Oh, I, I thought I was gonna have some of that, but <laughs> apparently not. All right, so who? Okay, you go. Hello. Yes. Where's the mic? Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Marcus. Where are I'm you? Yeah, I'm here. In right front. there, there. Okay. My name is Omaomi. Yes, ma'am. And I'm asking, my, my kid sister wants to own a restaurant. She wants to be a chef. Yes. So what's, what quick advice would you have for her and tips to start, you know, from where she is? You know, you talked about going to America with just $300. Yeah. So, so what, it, what tips do you have so for take her? Take from here. So what, uh, your sister wants to be a chef? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what the uh, first thing she should do, does she live here in Lagos? Right here. All right, so I'm, this is serious. What you should be doing. How old are you? So you've gone to college and everything. Yes. Great. So you should sign up. You should work with chef here. See, right? So you should get experience, real experience, right? You should work in a restaurant here in Lagos. Then I would say go two years abroad, maybe to London, maybe to New York. Work in top restaurants. You look for great restaurants. Right, you do internship, about six months each place. Then you come back here, and then you have to put the financing work on the business plan. So your sister, making a restaurant takes everyone engaged, right? So if you know somebody good at marketing, you have to give that to your friend and say, you're gonna do the marketing. You know someone good at finance, you have to work with her and say, hey, we gotta put a business plan together. Because without a business plan, you can't go to any bank, right? You can't. So it's very important that you do, you do both, right? And then at the same time, as you experience and as you're traveling, you make sure that you keep working on your recipes. So what's your food going to be about? There you guys. There you go. Good to see you. So if you don't know, if you don't know your food, right? You have to keep working on your food. And as you travel, it might change a little bit. So a business plan creating, learning how a restaurant operates, both front of the house and back of the house. Be a waiter, be a manager, be a host, be a cook. All those stations, that takes about two years to go to every station. And then you come back and then you're more ready. Because if you don't open ready or have, you haven't gone through the steps, it's gonna be very hard, all right? I come back in two years and check, all right? Yes, what's the next question? Any more questions? How's the, how are we doing with the lamb? People enjoyed the lamb? Oh. What happened? What happened? Uh, what happened? Good yes. afternoon. My name is Jenny. Jenny, how are you? I'm well, and you? Good. OK, um, I have a simple question, probably. Yes. In three words, I mean, yeah. to different persons. In three words? Yes. What are you, Twitter? Twitter? Are you deciding <laughs> how many words I'm gonna use? In three words. To so different what? persons, um, cooking and food means different things. Huh? In three words, what does it mean to you? Food, food? and cooking. Well, for, I'm very passionate, right, about it. It also means, to be a good cook means that you know yourself. You know? You can't cook unless you know where you came from. You know who you are, and you know where you're going. So for me, it's about learning about yourself, but it's also sharing community. Without my community of cooks, without my community of my guests, I wouldn't be anywhere. So passionate community, and really get to know yourself and be able to share. It's more Thank than you. three words, but that's really what it means. All right, who had the shrimp roll? Who had the shrimp roll? Who had the shrimp? Yes. Did we like the shrimp? Yes. Nice. It's very simple. Good. It's very easy. So all it is 
is shrimp that we boiled, then we wrapped it in rice paper, right? Like a sushi roll. Very, very easy. This is a $2 investment. That's what it cost. Sushi roll. You don't have to make sushi. Basically, we took pears that we slide thin, rice paper, shrimp, rolled it up, all right? And then we sliced it to those pieces. All right, so behind me, Sid has, give me that pen. So behind me here, we're going to have a rack of lamb, and this is going to be spiced with both suya spices and berbera. So I hope you're going to like this. So when you sear something, when you cook a rack of lamb, all these words, searing something, it means something, right? So what we're doing here, we're taking the rack on very high heat, we're searing it. So that means that you can't saute or boil it. You need to sear it, because this will really close in all the flavors. Then we'll let that cool down. Put that on that. Put that. Yeah. And then we're going to put a crust on here, right? With a crust that you have very simple. Bread crumbs, egg yolk, mustard, suya, berbere. We mix it, right? Like a paste. A paste like this you can put on anything. You can put it on fish, you can put it on meat, and then you roast it on 200 degrees for about 15 minutes in the oven. And again, we might all appreciate lamb differently. In Africa, we still want our meat well done. Well, we're about to change that today. We're about to change that today. Part of tasting new food is experiencing texturally very different. And it's a different cut. So when you cook something like lamb, 15 minutes, then you also have to let it rest about 15 minutes, right? Have they rested? Cool. So all of these, you see these lamb racks? Line up the plates, and I need a cutting board. Smell this, this smells good. It smells good. It's good, right? It smells good. <laughs> yes, I trust you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yes. But we're not going to have it well done. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So this is part of evolving, right? Trust me, when you go in Ethiopia, one of the most famous dishes is kitfo. It's raw beef. But when someone eats their own, when you eat the steak in Ethiopia, always well done. I can never figure that out. <laughs> so, when you come to my restaurant in New York, this is very expensive. So today when I give it to you for free, you should have it, right? <laughs> what happened with my fast food? Didn't we send that girl out a long time ago? It takes a while. It's African fast food. I love it. Good. Really fast. <laughs> I love it. Where's the cutting board? Good. All right, where do we have our plates? plates here. So, who wants to come up and slice with me? I just want somebody to slice. Do we have a good knife here? All right, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. So, you should wash your hands. So, you're going to do blend? So, I don't even know if we have four tonight, but we cooked them medium well, so you guys, it's not going to be any blood or anything like that. We cooked them a little bit longer than we normally would. That's your lamb chop. Enjoy it. Do I have a spoon, please? Give me a spoon. No. So, this is a little bit of oil that we're going to put on top of it. Enjoy this now, because once you come to New York to my restaurant, I'm going to charge you a lot of money. <laughs> Get the vegetables. Come on. Yeah. So, so you can start plating up. That's it. Start plating up. So I'm going to have, we have about 10 chops here. So we're going to just put some vegetables now. You can check it out. You can hang out with us. That's okay. So, like I said, it's going to go fast. It's going to go fast. Not, and people who had the other food should not come up. We should be a little bit letting everybody get a taste, right? 
By the way, I want a round of applause for all the students that worked really, really hard. And get their names right now, because in one year, they're going to open their own restaurant, and you guys can't get in. So yes, you go and find the people you want to serve. Thank you. It's a little bit of rack of lamb with some beautiful vegetables. I was inspired what you guys did. So what I got from my street food from, from the suya, I have a little bit of peanuts, a little bit of roasted vegetables, and of course, this oil that is called awase as berbere. Is it good? It's good, right? Maybe I should continue to cook. That's good. I want to say thank you okay. to all of you guys for showing up. I want to say, th I want to say thank you to GT Bank for hosting this. If you keep coming back, we're going to do this every year. And from, all, from me to you, thank you so much. And congratulations for this festival. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, what's up, guys? They call me DJ Spino, AKA The Cap. You enjoyed the video you just watched? Please, please subscribe and then the TV. Just click below and subscribe and you can watch more amazing videos. Thank you.